Hi, this is Rick Hood of Navigation Northwest. I wanted to share with you for the next few minutes some of the features of Terrain Navigator Pro by MyTopo that are useful and relevant for SAR operations. Okay, we're looking at a topo in the program of the downtown area of Seattle. We have a hypothetical search at Drunken Charlie Lake. I'm going to use the find feature. If it's in the USGS name database, all I have to do is search place names. I already have Drunken Charlie in there. Hit find. Replace active. That's one way to do it. There's Drunken Charlie Lake. I've already got this set up. Here's our command post. And here's the last known point. I'm going to get rid of the red uh, ring by just left clicking on the perimeter and it's gone. I can get information about this last known point. I've already typed it in. Just left click information. You can see the name of the map, 20 foot contours, May 1993. The coordinates, let me talk about this for a quick second here. I've set as the primary coordinates up here, the top row, I've set the primary coordinates SUTM, which is what our ground teams use. And that's what displays here. The secondary coordinates also change real time and I have that set up in degrees, minutes, decimal minutes, it's, that's what we use for ground to air. A lot of times this is also useful to have this set up in range township or even range township as your primary and UTM as your secondary. Both of these are set up NAD 27 because we're primarily using the USGS maps but if we were using USGS aerials then NAD 83 makes a lot of sense. Okay I'm going to close that out. Uh, this is our command post which is not too far and you'll see why we have it located here in just a minute. Uh, what I want to do is switch to the two map mode for you. It duplicates it. I'm going to switch to an overview. This is the the active window. Just want to zoom out here so you can get a better sense of the gross topography. Now let's switch to the aerial view which is often much more current and useful for SAR and you can see Drunken Charlie Lake. To make these approximately the same scale I'm just going to go ahead and change the active window and now you can see everything is basically the same. Okay I'm also going to because I've already stored it go to layers I've done some planning I'm going to go to routes this is a route that I've set up it's team 3 a is assigned, so team 3 assigned and it's ops period 1. Right now you can see I have it hidden from view. I'm going to unhide it. If I wanted to have some notes I could. I'll close that. Now it appears on both. And you can see I have them going down here, going around these contours, going upstream, up marsh, and then back here. I've also got a couple teams that I'm going to assign on these roads this way and here and since I'm just printing out the map um, I'm just concerned about their track. Okay so now let's go ahead and see what happens when we send the information to the GPS and when they would come back and this is what it would look like when they return. I'm just going to turn on layers, tracks and I'm just going to grab these top three one, three, and four, and send those right here. Unhide, unhide, and I have them different colors. Unhide so we can see. I could have notes there if I wanted to in terms of what they found or didn't find. And you can now see that this blue is where they actually walked. Uh, relative to what they were assigned and then since these teams walked the road it was pretty straightforward and that came right back. So we're in pretty good shape. Um, we could print this out. It's very easy uh, and you have a lot of utility in the print feature. You can print not only the maps but you can print an overview map. You can print uh, safety instructions, callback instructions, but that's for another video. Thank you for uh, spending a few minutes with me. And again this is Rick Hood of Navigation Northwest.